everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're gonna be diving into a very interesting topic that I, oh, I have been really wanting to cover for quite some time. We are gonna be talking about the dark reality of AI and how it is impacting everyone in so many ways. So if you guys do or don't know, I talk about honestly anything sketchy and weird on the internet. Like if we're gonna talk about scams, unethical businesses, weird corners of the internet and things that are just kind of odd. I like having conversations about them and just diving into them because I'm curious and I know some of you guys are as well. And one thing I've noticed is, well, there's certain aspects of AI that I think are really incredible and useful. As there are some levels of AI I do personally use, I've come to realize that there is an incredibly dark and scary reality of AI. And I do want to talk about it because I think one, it's really important to bring awareness. And two, I don't think people truly understand that AI is not necessarily just a fun little feature on Snapchat anymore or a fun little thing that you can type in and ask questions. I think there's a lot more that's happening, a lot more that's being weaponized now. And it's getting really alarming. We're talking about scams, predatory behaviors, making complete deep fakes and fake things about you and so much more. So that is what we were diving into is the scary dark reality of AI and why this is getting extremely dangerous. So before I hop into today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button down below. My merch second channel podcast, Instagram and TikTok are in the description below if you guys wanna hang out with me more. And yeah, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about just artificial intelligence, also known as AI. So utilize artificial intelligence intelligence and give you answers of things that you want. So for example, chat GPT is something that many people are aware of where it is a search engine, I would kind of call it, where you can type in a question and it will essentially give you back an answer. You can ask things about maybe a world event. You can ask about maybe organizing your schedule. It can do a lot for you and it's really impressive. Now AI is essentially expanding all across the world and it has been around for, I would say quite some time, but it's really, I think, especially been picking up in the past five years, I would say, of levels of it being used and now it's just a full blown thing that so many people are utilizing constantly. For example, there are apps that are being created that can essentially use AI to make your old blurry photos crystal clear and really aesthetically pleasing, which is honestly kind of impressive, right? Like an old childhood photo that's blurry and really bad quality can now look like a really clear taken from your iPhone 14 photo. There are ways that you can now utilize it for productivity with work. I even use it when it comes to organizing myself and my work. And there's just many other little things that I use it for that are really beneficial. There are companies now that are using it, which can be really, really good for their overall productivity or outsourcing information. However, let's talk about the severe and scary issues and how it is essentially getting into our everyday life and how it is impacting creators, businesses, and so much more. So let's start off with how it's impacting creatives and artists. So the first thing I want to discuss is AI art. Now, originally I noticed AI art was kind of like popping off more and there was a lot of trends of like, oh my God, I turned myself into like a 90s yearbook photo. You can do it too. And when I saw that was like, oh my God, no way. That's like the coolest idea ever. So I log onto an app and I'm like utilizing it. And I'm also seeing that there's other people who are utilizing it to make promos for their businesses, logos, and so much more. The problem is though, is now we're starting to see a really huge uptick with AI essentially using other artists' pieces for their research to develop and create pieces that aren't actually technically unique in a way. But AI has essentially been utilizing some of these publicly posted artist pages and so much more. And from what I am learning from other people and they are using them to create AI art. Now, another issue with this is a lot of artists are actually speaking out. I am gonna post up a couple clips here to give you examples of how this is so dangerous. Okay, so let's talk about AI art and why exactly it's so bad. So if you're familiar with the concept of AI, you probably understand that artificial intelligence can't really generate anything on its own. It can't generate its own original thoughts or its own original ideas. AI is basically trained to behave a certain way by feeding it a database of information. And this database teaches AI how to act. So when it comes to AI art generators like say Midjourney, these art generators have been fed databases of billions of pieces of artwork and work from artists that did not consent to have their artwork fed into these AI art generators. Many of these generators were then advertised as free ways to recreate the work of many prolific artists. So for example, people could generate fake screenshots from fake Studio Ghibli movies or, you know, enter in a prompt like Victorian woman with black hair and a feathered hat and generate that in the Studio Ghibli art style. The problem is, of course, both in a social way, people are seeing fake images of things they do not know were not actually drawn by that artist. You can see how that could get very bad if someone, say, generated an offensive or derogatory image in a certain artist's art style and people believed that was really drawn by that artist. And then the second is that that's plagiarism, that's art theft, and it's not okay. So this is just a really big problem because there are so many artists that truly work at their craft and are working so hard at making things and it's really disheartening when somebody can just kind of like claim to be an artist and just generate it through AI when it's like complete bullshit. And also what's alarming because if you put hard work into something, and 
then technology will pull it from any platform, no matter what it is, if it's publicly posted. Now, something that is inspired by you can be utilized for somebody else, which can be really problematic. So for example, we might have businesses that want to sell digital products. And if they pull your kind of art and pieces, the AI is just giving it to you and you don't really exactly know where it's from. And then businesses can fall into potentially snatching other people's designs and the artist is not actually getting credit. And I, now while I understand, I have personally played with AI. Uh, I actually hopped onto a couple platforms just to see what it would develop. It is really fascinating and cool, but I think some people have taken it a little bit too far and used it for too much in business to now they're essentially utilizing art and it's becoming a huge problem. Another issue with it as well, I think is it's also impacting other creatives and content creators in general. Now, this is something that I think is kind of, oh, uh, I've noticed this, this is becoming a big problem. And this is gonna lead into other issues that are gonna be connected to the everyday person who doesn't have a content creator job. However, AI is starting to kind of seep into content creator world now when it comes to my work, for example. So a big issue that I'm actually noticing is deep fakes. Now, this is something I've noticed in the creator space, but it is in no way limited to the creator space. Deep fakes are essentially where somebody can get your likeness and uh, make you do and say things, which is fuck scary. So somebody can literally take me, like as I make videos for a living, AI can literally know how I move, how I speak, my voice, everything. And somebody can literally create me saying absolutely anything they want. Now that is genuinely fucking terrifying. Now how this is impacting everyone is one that can cause unnecessary scandals for creators, which is really fucking alarming to say the least. And having to go out of your way to prove, hi, that was not me. Another situation that is kind of connected to this on the creator side is deep fakes are also not only being used for fake scandals, Scandals, but they're also being used for fake production. Now, companies and sketchy companies at that, what they're starting to do is essentially pull a content creator that has a good audience, well-known, or just anyone they're interested in and make a deep fake of this content creator promoting their product. Now, what's so problematic and unethical about this is one, the creator doesn't actually want to promote that product. They never agreed to, they weren't paid for it, no nothing, but they're using their likeness and everything to promote a product that is complete bullshit. Actually, here's a creator I'm gonna give an example of where she actually had her likeness snatched up and was utilized for paid ads to apparently promote products that she never actually was promoting. It was all AI generated. So AI stole my likeness and created a deep fake ad of me promoting erectile dysfunction pills. Let's talk about it. This actually happened when I was on my honeymoon. So I was taking time offline. Um, but now that I am back home and freshly out of the shower and just kind of sitting here waiting for my hair to dry, I figured I could just share the story time with you. I have videos that people had sent me of this ad. I'm gonna show you one on my computer. Um, I haven't seen the full, full thing. I think it was a couple minutes long, but the thing that feels the most violating about this is they pulled footage from by far the most vulnerable video I had ever posted on my channel, where I was sitting in my bedroom explaining very traumatic, difficult things that I was, had gone through in the years prior. So this ad was me in my bedroom, in my old apartment in Austin, wearing my clothes, talking about their pill. Um, the only thing is it wasn't my voice. Sharing this little video clip with you probably isn't smart in terms of, you know, giving them more attention, but I actually think it's super important to talk about because we are now entering this era of living our lives online to where we need to question everything we see because someone that you know could be in a video saying something to you looks exactly like them and it could be completely fabricated. Okay, I'm gonna play a couple seconds of this ad, but um, do, do be warned. Obviously there's mentions of sexual things, so embarrassing moments. Michael spent years having a lot of difficulty maintaining an erection and having a very small... Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. I honestly don't know how we as a society can be like more discerning as to being able to tell what is real and what is fake because it's going to continue to get more and more realistic and accurate over time. Um, there's not like a guidebook to us knowing what to believe. I guess we're just gonna have to figure it out all together, but the internet is changing fast. I guess trust no one, believe nothing on the internet. It's just a motto to live by for a while. Now this is extremely alarming if we think about it because you may be talking about something or maybe posting up regularly on your everyday social media could possibly be used by other companies in a sketchy and unethical way in a, this is a real life customer promo, which is so sketchy. It's also really unethical for me because I want everyone who is watching me as a content creator to be able to know that I'm pretty particular with who I promote and who I talk about on my channel. And I, if, if a brand is like fake utilizing me 
me to promote a product that I've never touched, never used, nor would I actually promote, it's problematic because then if somebody sees it and doesn't actually know that it's AI, then now we're falling into problems of somebody is going to not trust me anymore because of something that's fake. Now that is, oh my God, so fucking awful, so wrong, but it's something that you have to think about. And again, this could potentially seep into many other things. Like there's just anything, essentially your likeness can be attached, taken and utilized for anything, which is getting very alarming. Another way that AI has been essentially used in such a dark and scary way is AI scam calls. And this one, I learned about this, I think about a year ago, and it scared the shit out of me. There was a few individuals who received calls of their loved ones screaming, like completely screaming, losing their shit, talking about like, please do whatever they say. And it was a hostage situation apparently where somebody made a fake AI of their child or a relative, somebody that they love, made a fake audio with that voice, called a person and said, you need to give me money and pretend that it was a kidnapping situation or your child, partner, whoever will die. I pick up the phone and I hear my daughter's voice and it says, mom, and she's sobbing. And I was like, what happened? And she's like, mom, I, I, I messed up. And she's sobbing and crying. And then I hear a man's voice say, put your head back, lie down. And then I'm like, wait, what, what's going on? And this man gets on the phone and he's like, listen here, I've got your daughter. This is how it's gonna go down. You call the police, you call anybody. I'm gonna pop her stomach so full of drugs, I'm gonna have my way with her and I'll drop her off in Mexico. And at that moment, I just start shaking. I'm like, what? In the background, she's going, help me, mom, please help me, help me, and falling. And you have absolutely no doubt in your mind that that was her voice. Oh, 100% her voice, 100% her voice. It was never a question of, you know, who is this? Or it was completely her voice. It was her inflection. It was the way she would have cried. I never doubted for one second it was her. Now people have been caught up in these situations genuinely thinking that their partner, their child has been kidnapped and that is the only way to get them back. So scammers are going to such an insane hellish level to where they will utilizing AI to get an audio and a voice manipulated to sound like it is something scary and traumatizing to make you do something. Like, and I get it. Naturally, if I, I had somebody who was calling me like that, I would literally want to do anything to make sure that they were okay. So putting someone in a position to essentially dump their savings onto a scammer to get their child back. And then they don't even realize that actually their child is busy doing something right now and they are perfectly okay and they had no idea is just so scary and awful. And this is just a new way that some people are essentially scamming you. There could be many examples of, oh my God, my phone's broken, I need your help. And you could be like, oh, that's why I'm getting a call from a strange number because the voice sounds like the person who they claim to be. This is traumatizing. Even though it actually is completely fake, it's still traumatizing to hear those kinds of things happening over a phone call and you genuinely thinking your person is being kidnapped. And this can happen in a wide variety of ways. Again, someone can call you and try and get information out of you and pretend that they are your friend when they genuinely, it's its a fake AI. It's completely com bullshit. Like it's not actually real. It's someone manipulating AI to get info out of you. That is so scary. Like again, if my mom calls me and is like, hey, actually I need this personal information from you. I'm gonna give it to my mom. Now, oh, this one stresses me out a lot. And I'm huge. <sighs> Trigger, trigger warning on this because like this is I, I literally get nauseous and super uncomfortable talking about this because this is something that I think is an extremely real thing. Um, I, I feel like I might have to really consider uh, and I know many other people will. So I know the AI deep fakes of porn and making fake videos. So this is something that is extremely stressful and this is where, again, the deep fake AI is utilized to take my likeness um, and me, I'm getting so stressed out over this. This is such a real problem and this is why I talk about this and utilize it for revenge porn or just making fake things. Now, this is so alarming because me personally, as a content creator, I have had some weird fucking people send me emails talking about what they wanna do to me. DMs, weird shit, creepy fucking man. Yes, absolutely, that has happened. And it unsettles me that somebody has the power to make fake AI images of them assaulting me or me in a porn, like, which I'm not doing. Y'all are not gonna ever see something like that real of me, I promise you. So something like that coming out though is still traumatizing and stressful because it looks real. And also this can be utilized, not even just if someone wants to post it as like revenge porn or like fake revenge porn, just being an awful piece of shit. Also, they can do it just for their 
their own fun, which is so stressful. Now this doesn't just, again, I wanna make this super clear. This doesn't just happen to content creators. I'm thinking of in a way of, I have a lot of strangers on the internet that watch me and a lot of y'all are incredible, but there's that really small group of people that are awful. That is literally everyday life for many people. This happens a lot where actually there have been people who have um, unalived themselves because they were experiencing fake images like this being spread around them. The streaming world was shaken to its core recently when deep fake adult content featuring female streamers was discovered. Twitch streamer Cutie Cinderella is one of the streamers who found themselves featured in the videos and she went live for a few minutes to share the pain that she felt. Atrioc for showing it to thousands of people? <laughs> the people DMing me pictures of myself from that website? you all. If you are able to look at that, you are the problem. You see women as an object. It should not be part of my job to be harassed, to see pictures of me nude spread around. It should not be something that is found on the internet. It shouldn't be. That's That shouldn't be a part of my job. And to the person that made that website, I'm going to f sue you. I promise you. With every part of my soul, I'm going to f sue you. Most are between 12 and 14 years old received fake nude photos generated by artificial intelligence. The images were created by a pay-per-use application based on a very simple principle, supply a real photo of the person in skimpy clothing, and the fake nude image is generated. A few of the 20 or so girls were blackmailed, with the perpetrators demanding money in exchange for not broadcasting the false nude images. An investigation has been launched and several alleged perpetrators have already been identified. According to a police source contacted by El Confidential, a Spanish media outlet, a priori, everything indicates that the perpetrators are the victim's peers. Most of them would be the same age as the victims, between 12 and 14, but some are older and therefore risk a heavier sentence. I don't even know how to describe what's been happening to me for the past 48 hours. Two days ago, someone sent me a message request on Instagram from a faceless account, uh, no followers, no posts, nothing. And it was pictures of me that I had posted, fully clothed, completely clothed. Um, and they have put them through some editing AI program to edit me naked. They basically photoshopped me naked. And it's already weird to make that on your own time, but it's even weirder to send it to me. And what's even worse is that the next day when I woke up, I was getting dozens of DMs of these images, but without the watermarks. So this person paid to have the watermark removed and started distributing it like it was real. And they're really obviously fake too. Like if anyone has ever seen an actual picture or video of me, they'll know that I'm not built like that. I don't even have like a tattoo along my lower stomach. I don't have one there. I'm just letting you know that anything you see of me is edited or fake. I don't have any content. I don't sell content. None of that is real. And it's so gross. It's even more gross because the first time I tried to post about this, I was like, it's not real, by the way. And all the comments were so disgusting, like actually vile. They made me want to throw up multiple times. Like they were all like, now you gotta post the real ones. Where's the link? Obviously you want more people to see this. That's why you're posting about it. Like, no, it's because I want you to know they're not real. <laughs> Please stop. And I also kept getting comments of like, you did this to yourself, you asked for it. By what? Posting pictures of me with clothes on? How is that asking for it in any fucking way? Even again, Taylor Swift was an example of this, where over a football game, men were making fake images of her getting assaulted at games. What the f is wrong with now again i don't care if y'all are nosy do not look this shit up do not feed do not none of that like you i'm telling you this to bring awareness we don't need to dig into it any further because we don't need to feed the search engine and make this pop up and get more popular all i'm trying to say is this is alarming this is scary awful partners can make things manipulate things and because there's not enough laws around this and because revenge porn that's real might be considered but if it's fake it might not be as bad or we might have that we might not have enough like substantial laws to protect people, we're right now in a very bad area where somebody can have fake shit made up about them and put on porn sites and there's nothing that they can do. Even though it's fake, drives me crazy because this is something I have to think about and I have literally had to tell, I literally had to talk to my friends and family about this, my partner and we're like, look, this is a reality. I don't know, Um, like, but this is something that people are experiencing. This is extremely scary. Um, And again, I'm just like, I don't know what can happen because people are awful, but this is a reality many, 
of us live in now. And with the development of AI and the lack of actual regulation, clearly, because it's happening now to many other people. Another thing that I do want to discuss and talk about is this is also stepping into not only just adult fake revenge porn, but stepping into child uh, CSAM. So actually, I had um, several individuals from a very long ago past video say that child porn was not a proper term anymore. It's actually CSAM, which is actual child sexual abuse material. So I just want to make that super clear that that is the proper term and I will be using that from now on. But again, as we know, AI is being used for very, very scary things that can also essentially be a new way for predators to make things. Um, and this is another way reason why I hate family bloggers because they will post their children for anyone to see. And now we have all these videos and all these clips of these children. So enough for an AI to essentially pull a face of a child and someone can make something very awful. And it's not real, but it looks realistic and someone made it because they're disgusting and creepy. So this is not just for adults. People that ha are horrible and disgusting can make literally anything. A few weeks ago, I made a video about AI, specifically how AI is going to be used to try and ruin women's lives by creating fake revenge corn. There are apps that are claiming, upload a photo of someone fully clothed, and all we're going to change is we're going to take their clothes away. And considering men already use, like, legitimate intimate images that they've been given to try and ruin women's lives, now they don't even need that. They can just go to a girl's Instagram and grab some photos and boom, there you go. Uh, since I posted that, a few things have happened. Like... This advertisement that I found right on TikTok. Hello, do you have any picture of your crush? I came a curious this incredible AI website that I think you find interesting to the point where no girl want to know. Name website. You can remove clothes any picture. Upload the picture and you will receive picture your crush and no clothes after 30 seconds. Well, that's not bad at all. Uh, obviously, I covered up the name of the website and even the name of the TikTok page because I didn't want anybody going there to it. But that's just on TikTok. Over on Twitter, People have been calling out advertisements and posts like this. This one has almost 60,000 views. And it's literally telling you, use it to weaponize against women. You couldn't see her. Is that you in the picture? Where did you get that? Delete it now. Like, what a frigging nightmare this is. But as bad as that is, and it is very bad, it is just the tip of a giant, monstrous, horrific iceberg. And a lot of people in my original video left comments because they were already reading the writing on the wall. They were already going... Yeah, this is bad, but I think this is coming. And y'all were right. And by this is coming, I mean this. It's already here. It's already happening. Not one, but two articles from The Guardian inside of a month. How these images threaten to overwhelm the internet. And even wired, the AI-generated child abuse nightmare is here. Thousands of child abuse images are being created with AI. New images of old victims are appearing as criminals trade data sets. One watchdog group just barely starting their look, had found already over 3,000 AI-generated CSAM images. AI is a tool that can help people, but can also be very dangerous, and even some of the big movers and shakers in AI acknowledge this, like Sam Altman. He's the CEO of ChatGPT, and recently he testified in front of Congress and urged them to regulate AI. Talking a little bit more on deep fakes and expressing that is there's many other things that it can be used for. Again, we can have fake videos of politicians, public figures speaking and saying things that are literally not true. It's an AI. Overall, I am very paranoid about deep fakes in this, and I don't think that there's enough control over them. And I think we're just seeing more and more examples of victims to this. And it's very alarming. And so I just want to kind of equip you guys on what to look out for, what to be extremely cautious of, because this is very alarming. Now, I do want to talk about a little bit into the business and scams a tiny bit more. I know previously I discussed how like the voices can be used to essentially do like telemarketing scams and all that really sketchy and ethical shit, pretending to be somebody that actually is not. But I want to kind of take that a step further into the business side of it as well. That is just getting very sketchy and problematic. There are some businesses and companies in general that are essentially depending on AI in a way that is way too much and not actually reliable and far unnecessary and putting a lot of information into the hands of technology that I think is not properly regulated enough for you to do so. So for example, there are some companies that will essentially utilize AI in a way of replacing jobs. This is something that I am actually very uncomfortable with. Now, again, as I said, I have used AI when it comes to learning and overall maybe like photos or bit. Like it's really cool to be able to use it to like, they can edit like a short video for me in like the coolest way. Like, so I don't have to edit. And I'm talking about like short from like TikTok shit. Okay. No, I hand edit all of this just so y'all know, but it's really cool to see. And I have used the wonderful sides of it, but there are companies that are trying to utilize AI and using it in a way to excuse them paying low wages or not paying people anymore. Cognition AI. 
And today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. The first what? Let me show you an example of Devin in action. Oh no, Devin. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. After that, it builds a whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Okay, that's enough. Devin has a so there are actually reports on companies who are trying so desperately to move on to using AI the most because AI is not a person. You might have to pay for a program, but AI, again, is not a human being. So they might want to use AI more than actually hiring people, which can cause a really severe issue when it comes to um, jobs, the economy, and just people losing jobs in general, where now they're essentially competing with technology, which they can't exactly compete with. And now companies are trying to be like, oh, well, either you accept my low offer because I know you need a job and we're not going to pay you as much, or we're just going to stick with the AI. Or honestly, many companies would rather just stick with AI if they can, because it's overall cheaper and they're greedy f corporations who want to make millions and millions, if not billions of dollars and not actually pay people their worth, which is sick and disgusting. Another issue that I do want to discuss as well is actually leading into the investing side and multi-level marketing. So every weird thing I talk about on this channel, there's always something that leads into multi-level marketing companies. It drives me crazy every time it's that like weird thing that just hangs around we're like of course you're here i'm not surprised that you're here in this sketchy video topic have a seat let's talk about you multi-level marketing companies are progressing and growing as we know and they're very unethical and sketchy i'm not exactly going to go into why they're all sketchy and problematic they just are and i have multitudes of videos discussing how problematic and unethical multi-level marketing companies are and i have information and proof to back that up so just so you know if you'd like to look into it i will have like my my anti MLM playlist like pop up over here so you guys can learn a little bit uh, with me. The point is, is there are some multi-level marketing companies that are starting to promote their use of AI in a way that to me is quite alarming. So I'm actually going to take an example, iGenius. So iGenius is a multi-level marketing company that claims that they are all about trading and growing your finances, which honestly sounds like a really good idea. Now, I wish they weren't an MLM, you know, when they actually offered good services, but nonetheless, you actually join the MLM and spend a decent amount of money to get started. And one of their higher packages is you're able to learn and be assisted through AI and have something trade for you. So that can honestly be kind of alarming and sketchy, just depending on technology to do certain things for you in that way with your money, especially when I'm not exactly sure how much regulation is on programs like that. And again, talking about how it's like a good thing, a normal thing, something that is really beneficial. AI can be only as good as the coding that is put into it. You, you see what I'm saying? Sorry. People have had some issues when it comes to the AI trading or AI use usage with developing their, their trading portfolio. Some people have had some really negative experiences. Some people have said that it's bullshit and a scam, a waste of money, but some companies will promote that heavily and charge a hefty penny because they want you to utilize it. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a way that you can benefit from it, but I think it is alarming to depend so hardcore on technology that doesn't have as much regulation as I personally think it should have. Another way that multi-level marketing companies are stepping into the AI world is actually selling and offering programs that are one, super sketchy, but two, are supposed to help you run your multi-level marketing business. There are some companies that are like, this is how we're going to get you leads. This is how we're going to like recruit people for you. We're going to cold message for you. We're going to do all of this. That's kind of alarming that you're going to have an AI cold message and spam. One, that's really unethical because Instagram and many social media platforms will consider you spam and a bot and will kick your ass off of social media. So don't do that. Okay. You people will report you enough and then you're, it's not going to work out. But two, it's just so gross to me because I you would think the concept of MLMs would be actually connecting of making human connections, but paying for a program to do all of your recruiting for you is one, just really sketchy, two, unrealistic, I would say, and three, completely gross to try and have an AI pull someone into systems that genuinely statistically will not perform well for you, will not perform well for anyone. Now to wrap this up, I know a lot of us are like, okay, but what the hell can we do about this? Honestly, a lot of us just have to talk about these problems and that's literally why I'm making this video today is to overall bring awareness because a lot of this I'm noticing on TikTok. I'm seeing all these people post about it and it's inspired me to make a video compiled with all these crazy issues. Now I am hoping to kind of dive into this further according to like each topic that I've discussed because there's way more that I can go into, but I wanted to at least compile a list of things that I'm seeing now that I think AI is being weaponized for in a very problematic way. And even the FTC is actually releasing press releases discussing AI impersonations. Now this is an article that was again posted by the FTC and I do want to read this because at least there's a conversation 
conversation starting about removing things, trying to create more protections and regulations. If you guys don't know, the FTC is the Federal Trade Commission, and essentially they're there to try and help regulate some businesses is kind of the best way that I can say it. So the FTC proposes new protections to combat AI impersonation of individuals. Agency finalizes rule banning government and impersonation fraud and seeks to extend protections to individuals. The FTC is seeking public comment on a supplement notice of proposed rulemaking that would prohibit the impersonation of individuals. The proposed rule changes would extend protections of the new rule on government and business impersonation. The agency is taking this action in light of surging complaints around impersonation fraud, as well as public outcry about the harms caused to consumers and to impersonated in individuals. Emerging technology, including AI generating deep fakes, threatens to turbo change this scourge. And the FTC is committed to using all of its tools to detect, deter, and halt impersonation fraud. Now, this is an incredibly good start, I would say, but I still think that we are far from having enough regulations in my opinion. I think we really are in a huge point right now where we're getting, we're gonna have to get laws created on this. You know how something bad has to happen for like that label on your coffee to be put on there saying like, be careful hot, right? Something bad has to happen for the laws that we know to be created. And I think we're kind of in that point right now where we are waiting for bad things to happen as fucked up as that is for laws to be created and boundaries to be established to protect consumers. But at the end of the day, it still exists and people will also do shit illegally and not give a fuck and there's only so much that we can do regulating this kind of stuff. And it's just getting really scary to me how anyone can have access to creating something so scary, whether it's fake revenge porn, impersonating somebody, or overall making it as an excuse to scam people or just not pay people actual wages and using technology. It's really alarming. I'm glad the FTC is doing something, but that was what I wanted to discuss is the scary reality of AI that is popping up on TikTok. So thank you guys so so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, comment down below any of your thoughts, any other things you want me to cover or dive into because I would absolutely love to do so. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.